Mr. Stephen James. I thank the Minister for her answer, and I'm pleased to see the Home Secretary in his place. I congratulate him on achieving one year in his uh, role today. Uh, and in his first day in the post, I asked him to take a careful look at this issue. He said that uh, he would. And then on the 1st of April this year at column 799, I asked him for an update. And he said, and I quote, we had a further meeting to make some final decisions just last week, and I will be in touch with him shortly. But in the months since, uh, nothing has been announced. Many students face desperate hardship and need urgently to know the decision because their future depends on it. The Home Office, as the Minister has said, cancelled the visas of those who ETS claimed from its analysis had definitely cheated. I must say the claim by ETS that almost, I think, 97% of those who sat their test had in fact cheated seems to me completely implausible, but we'll let that uh, pass. Those who had their visas cancelled, uh, colleges had to expel them. By the end of 2016, there had been more than 35,870 refusal, curtailment and removal decisions in ETS cases, more than 4,600 removals and departures. But one estimate is that at least 2,000 of those denied visas are still in the UK. In country, appeals weren't allowed, but some have got cases to court. A growing number have convinced the courts they did not cheat. One showed that he never actually took a TOEIC test, and yet he had his visa cancelled because it was alleged that he cheated in a TOEIC test. It's proved extraordinarily hard for students to obtain from ETS the recordings said to be of them taking this test. One computer expert told the appeal court ETS's evidence is worthless. The appeal court has criticised the Home Office's evidence and in 2017 it said it was unlawful to force students to leave the country uh, in order to appeal. Many of those affected speak excellent English, so had no motive at all to pay somebody else to take the test for them. Thrown off their courses, denied any refund of their fees, the students cannot study or work. Some invested their families' life savings in order to obtain a British de degree. The savings have gone. They have no qualification and no income. They depend on kindly friends, but they say they couldn't endure the shame of going home with nothing, having apparently been convicted of cheating in the UK. Understandably, mental health problems are rife. So will the Minister now agree that those who lost their visas on toilet grounds but remain in the UK should have the opportunity to sit a new test and if they pass that to obtain a visa in order to complete their studies and to clear their names? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I thank the Honourable Gentleman for his question, and I'm going to return at the outset to the comments that I made about the National Audit Office report, which is expected to be published next month. The Home Office has been working closely with the NAO to provide information and evidence to them, and I think it's absolutely right that my right honourable friend, the Home Secretary, has the opportunity to reflect upon their report, consider uh, their findings, and then come back to this House with a statement. The Honourable Gentleman spoke about uh, the court cases that have indeed happened. The appeals framework, which of course he will be aware is set by Parliament, and the Immigration Act of 2014 does mean that there are no in-country appeals in the student route, which of course is where uh, these visas were issued. But the Home Office is taking a pragmatic approach because of the passage of time, and it's important to reflect that we are talking about a, a fraud that was perpetrated back in 2014, and that many people who have ongoing ETS litigation will potentially now have the right to bring a human rights claim or may wish to do so. And of course, under a human rights route, if they are refused, they then generally will have an in-country right of appeal. There were enormous numbers of cases where fraud was found to have happened and matching that showed that uh, a number of individuals had taken repeat tests on behalf of thousands and thousands of people. I am very conscious that there was a criminal trial at the start of this month which saw a further five convictions and whilst I appreciate the very strongly held beliefs of the honourable gentleman it is important that we reflect that this was fraud on an industrial scale and that we should react responsibly.